Let's talk about interview preparation. Every organization has a different process for evaluating the job, posting the job, testing and conducting the initial screening. Remember that every step along the way of the recruiting process must be systematic to ensure fairness and consistency. Many interviewers don't prepare at all and the result is an inconsistent and chaotic interview process. So let's do a better job than that. Here are some tips for reviewing applications. Before beginning the selection interview, take a few moments to review the job description and establish selection or evaluation criteria that you want to utilize when reviewing the applications of the candidates. The purpose of having a selection criteria is to assist you in identifying and narrowing your candidate pool by categorizing and distinguishing those applicants who are best qualified to perform the job. When reviewing resumes or applications, look for red flags that may call into question the applicant's suitability for the position. Note anything that seems overly general, vague, or unusual. Note misspellings, gaps of employment, and blanks left empty on the application form. Here are some examples of red flags. Rounded off dates, for example, 2015 rather than May 2015. Another red flag is reasons for leaving past jobs. If they mention personal reasons, you should ask about that, particularly if it was vague or very negative. We'll talk later about what to do if a question comes up regarding a protected activity. Also, examine gaps in employment history. A gap may or may not be cause for concern, but you need to find out the reason before making an assessment. Another red flag would be jobs with decreasing responsibility or decreasing pay rates. You want to see a logical progression in their career. Short-term employment at several jobs and multiple shifts in career path or job hopping. Overly vague or general job duties or job titles. For example, an applicant may write that he or she was or is responsible for contract administration as a job duty. Explore this phrase further to determine what it means. The administration could have been obtaining certificate of insurance or getting the contract signed. Similarly, different organizations may use the job title administrative assistant to describe duties ranging from a secretary to a mid-level managerial position. These red flags might be knockout factors or they may be just topics you want to explore further. What people have done in the past is the best indicator of what they will do in the future. This is the foundation of competency-based interviewing. If you truly understand and accept this premise, it will structure your whole interviewing approach and your chances for success will go way up when you make your decision based on sound factual data about an applicant's past work history. So ask questions which focus on the applicant's past performance. An applicant's past will offer you tangible facts upon which you can make reliable assumptions. Ask an applicant what he or she has done for employers in the past and you'll gain fairly quickly a sense of the kind of performance you can expect. Avoid hypothetical questions or questions that address the applicant's personal lifestyle or habits. These will only provide you with information that is either unreliable or irrelevant to the position or unlawful. Ask questions that relate directly to your listed requirements. If you maintain a one-to-one -one correspondence between questions and requirements, you'll be able to gain the most information possible in the time allotted for the interview. Of course, each question may lead to additional conversation and follow-up questions. That type of interaction is the key to a truly successful interview. But when you initiate a new topic for conversation, make sure that it relates directly to one of your requirements. That way, subsequent discussion will help you place the information you gain in a clear and understandable context. To summarize, establish the position responsibilities, determine your requirements, and measure each applicant against these criteria. Only then will you be able to make the kind of hire that paves the way for future success for your new employee, for your organization, and for you as a hiring manager. You certainly can probe for more than a rehearsed answer or if the applicant comes up blank. You can assist them by saying, I am sure in your position at XYZ you had experience in this area, but don't badger them for an answer. Simply move on to your next question. Preparing your interview questions. 
This brings up the point that we need to have a list of prepared questions in advance to ensure that we are consistent in our interview process. Some interviewers think they can simply wing it and conduct the interview like a normal conversation, but there are several issues with this approach. The questions are not consistent from one applicant to the next. You might grill one person on their technical skills and talk about things you have in common with another applicant, failing to evaluate their specific skills. We also need to ensure the conversation does not veer off into unlawful areas such as childcare, age, medical issues, or another protected area. We will get to the legal issues in this module and we will tell you how to handle the interview if an issue does come up. Telling the applicant that we have an agenda prepared of questions we will ask each and every applicant and sticking to that agenda demonstrates that we have a process and we will stick to it. The best types of questions to ask are those about past experiences. The response will be anchored in an event that really happened and situations that they really encountered. Sure, they can make up a response tailored to what they think you want to hear, but that is hard to do on the fly. Ask about circumstances, actions, results, and outcomes. Avoid closed-end questions and also avoid hypothetical questions. By using the Bullseye database, you'll get pre-formulated questions that are in the perfect format. Experts agree that you should hire for attitude but train for skills, but that's simplistic. Behavioral interviewing is also popular but that is only about behaviors. Others use the model KSA, or Knowledge, Skills, and Abilities, for scoping the job with a job description, job scorecard, or a job posting. These articles highlight the need to focus on behaviors. Clearly, we need a balanced approach for evaluating candidates. Successful investor and author Ray Dalio's book, Principles, from 2017, states that to hire well, one needs a more scientific process that precisely matches people's values, abilities, and skills with the organization's culture and its career paths. Many employers don't ask any questions about values, so it's important to have a balanced approach when you're asking questions of all applicants, focusing on knowledge, skills, values, and behaviors. Another theory divides skills into the two spheres of the brain, the left brain and the right brain. Left brain, or technical skills, are topics such as logic, rules, analysis, rationality, knowledge, language, objectivity, math, science, and computer skills. Skills on the right side of the brain include topics such as creativity, intuition, curiosity, chaos, art, the big picture, belief, freedom, and passion. This is based on the publication called Lateralization of Brain Function by neuropsychologist and Nobel laureate Roger Wolcott Sperry. This model basically divides skills into technical skills on the left side and interpersonal skills on the right side. The bullseye model takes all of these different theories and puts them into one simple model with four quadrants, knowledge, skills, values, and behaviors. The first quadrant is knowledge. Knowledge is what they know about the industry, the market, the job functions, their education, or any specialized expertise they have. Topics would be accounting, the company, customer, education, expertise, industry, job functions, learning, and products. This is basically information that they know or have obtained through education or experience. A good way to assess their knowledge level is to give them a simple test that could be done prior to the interview or after. However, just because they have the knowledge does not mean that they actually have the skill. Skills would be what they can do or have done, how they have impacted performance, productivity, and the bottom line. Skills can be gauged from past experiences or choices or by skill-based test. Topics in the quadrant of skills would be analysis, budgeting, customer service, equipment, graphics, management, organization, presentations, project management, research, sales, social media, time management, training, and writing. Skills are basically what they can do or have done in terms of work product, examples, projects, or goals they have achieved. On the right side are beliefs or values, and values is what they think is important and what the organization has determined to be the important operating philosophies and principles. Organizations spend a significant amount of time and effort putting together stated values, 
and interviewing is one way to ensure that your hires demonstrate those values. Select from the topics listed here and ask each and every applicant about what they have done in their career to demonstrate that value. Some examples are accountability, community, commitment, diversity, entrepreneurship, the environment, ethics, integrity, quality improvement, responsibility, and respect, although there are several more listed in the Bullseye database. And finally, behaviors are how they act and respond, including their own self-management, their communication style, and their work style. Examples of topics in the behaviors category are communication, change, conflict, creativity, initiative, motivation, multitasking, professionalism, self-awareness, self-direction, stress, management, and teamwork, although there are several more topics under behaviors as well. The Bullseye Interview Database has 100 topics to choose from within those four quadrants, providing about five questions per topic, giving you a wide variety of questions to choose from. Use the Bullseye Interview Database to select enough questions for your screening interviews on the phone or via Zoom, as well as your face-to-face -face interviews. Choose enough questions so that you can conduct your screening interviews as well as your multiple interviews that you might have. 10 to 20 questions per 45 minute interview is usually sufficient. Save and print your agenda and bring it to the interview to demonstrate to the applicant that you have a list of questions that you're going to be asking each and every applicant and use the area provided to take notes during the interview. Every organization has their own way of evaluating applicants, either thumbs up, neutral, or thumbs down, or rating scales of 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. If you do take notes, make sure that you don't write down anything discriminatory or inappropriate. And keep a copy of the interview agenda in your recruiting file for two years to demonstrate that you had a consistent, solid process. However, don't keep copies of all the individual applicant evaluations in the file. Each question provides an answer guide on what to look for in the applicant's response to your question. You can also select from pre-made job-specific templates that are a selection of attributes that are common to specific positions. Also included are additional resources such as forms, tools, and checklists that will assist you in standardizing your interview process. For more information, see bullseyeinterview.com.